You're about to see my attempt at shooting in the macro realm. This was a whole lot of fun. This was all shot handheld using the Panasonic S5 Mark II X and this 100mm f2.8 macro lens. Let's get into it. In today's video, we're checking out the Panasonic Lumix S series 100mm f2.8 macro lens for the L mount. This 100mm macro lens features the same size, weight, and form factor as the other prime lenses in this range, making the S series the most consistent range of lenses I've used from any system. This 100mm prime is also the world's smallest autofocus full frame macro lens over 90mm with at least a one to one reproduction. Like the other primes in this series, the colors and contrast are matched, so you won't need to spend time making corrections in editing when mixing footage shot with different lenses on the timeline. It's very impressive that Panasonic was able to make a 100mm macro lens like this in the same form factor as the rest of the primes in the series. This lens is dust and splash resistant and can operate down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. We get the same 67mm filter thread found on the rest of the lenses in this series and the focus ring feels identical to the rest of the primes. This 100mm prime lens only weighs 298 grams, excluding the lens cap and rear lens hood. If you're a gimbal shooter, you'll appreciate the same size, weight, and form factor the rest of the lenses in this line, so you won't need to go ahead and rebalance your gimbal if you plan on switching out lenses. The minimum focusing distance is a very impressive 20.4 centimeters, and thanks to the focal length and that one-to-one -one reproduction, you won't be casting shadows on your subject like you might with other lens alternatives. On the side of the lens, there's two main buttons. We get the same autofocus manual focus switch that we find on the other primes in this range, and there's also a three-way distance switch. The distance switch can be set to full all the way forward, which allows you to focus from infinity to minimum focus. With the toggle switch in the center, we can shoot between 0.5 meters or 50 centimeters all the way through to infinity. In position three, which is the macro setting, we can shoot anywhere from 0.5 meters or 50 centimeters all the way down to 20.4. The benefit of this three-way switch is that it stops the lens or autofocus from looking for objects outside of the pre-selected range. This is especially useful for macro work, whereas for portraits, you can leave it set to full and you're good to go. The autofocus motors are dead silent and it has the same smooth aperture controls as found in the other primes. The aperture range goes from f2.8 wide open all the way down to f22. If you're new to using a macro lens, let me show you how close you can actually get to a subject. As you can see here, I have this cool tiny cactus in my garden. It's about half the height of my index finger. When I took this first photo, I was very impressed with the sharpness and subject separation, but you can get even closer. The second photo is much closer than before with the cactus filling most of the shot. But lastly, here's a shot at the minimum focusing distance. This is so close that you're now only seeing the top corner of the cactus. You can see the spikes on the cactus and it still looks extremely sharp. If you like to shoot product photography or make product tutorials or reviews, this lens is a no brainer. You can get so close to buttons, dials and features on an object without casting a shadow on it. I was able to get right in close to the command dial knurling, which would be impossible without this macro lens. All right, let's talk about depth of field because one thing I noticed when shooting with this lens is how razor thin the focus area is and how quickly and beautiful the fall off looks. If you nail focus, the end result is very impressive. There's so much shallow depth of field with this lens at 100 millimeters f2.8 that I found it almost impossible to shoot video and to track these bees with great success. I stopped down past F10 for most of these sample images here, and as you can see, there's still plenty of background blur. I managed to take a few photos of a crane fly, which is something I've never seen before until this day, 
and the photo is sharp and detailed while still having plenty of shallow depth of field. This 100mm focal length is also great for portraits and these examples show you how well it performs using autofocus in aperture priority mode. The f2.8 paired with this tight focal length allows for awesome subject separation and background blur. The subject here really pops from the background while the camera nailed autofocus on the eye. When it comes to sharpness, this lens is sharp from f2.8 all the way through to f22. I shot a bunch of real-world photos in all different kinds of conditions and I had no issues with sharpness whatsoever. I was also very impressed at how sharp this lens is for portraits, but how flattering it is to the face thanks to the beautiful compression. Alright, if you're a video shooter, just know this lens has no optical image stabilization, but paired with the S5 Mark II or X, I turned on the IS boost feature on the camera, and it allows you to get an almost tripod looking shot when shooting handheld. And all of the video samples you've seen so far are all shot handheld, just right up close like this. So I didn't use any tripods or whatever, and I was able to get really great results. When it comes to focus breathing, I would expect to see some on a 100 millimeter lens, and this does have some, but it's definitely not as bad as even some of my wide angle lenses for other systems. So yeah, the focus breathing is minimal, but it's definitely there as you can see from these examples. If you plan on doing macro work with autofocus, one area mode is probably your best friend. Now there's also a tracking mode on this camera as well, which might give you some good success as well, depending on your subject. But for most of the shots you've seen so far, I ended up switching it back to manual focus. All right, let's talk about video autofocus for human tracking. So this works well in non-demanding situations like this, for example. If I cover my face, it does a good job at finding my hand and then reacquiring focus on my face when I move my hand away. Overall, this lens is fine for simple face detection or body tracking tasks, for example, but for anything more demanding, I would definitely choose the 50 or 85 millimeter lens and even just go into APS-C crop mode. And that will give you a similar focal length. For the best results with autofocus on this lens, just make sure you have that little switch on the side selected to the appropriate value anytime you start shooting video. If you like to shoot with manual focus, the experience is great. And while this is a focus by wire lens, it worked great in combination with the linear focusing options found in the Panasonic body. Linear focusing allows you to set a threshold of how far you need to turn the lens to focus from minimum to infinity focus. This is a really valuable tool to have, especially when focusing on smaller moving objects. All right, let's talk about flaring and chromatic aberration. So I pointed this at direct sunlight at F8, F11, F16, and so forth. And I definitely noticed there was some flaring with this lens. It's definitely not a deal breaker, but I did notice it. So maybe avoid shooting into direct sunlight like these examples. Who would do that anyway? <laughs> One thing I really love about this lens is that it has minimal chromatic aberration. Nearly all of the test photos, even shooting wide open at f2.8, look nice and clean with minimal fringing. Let's wrap this video up. If you own a Panasonic S5 Mark II or X or any of the other L mount cameras for that matter, and you want a macro capable lens, this is a great choice. The colors, contrast, and sharpness makes this a great one and done choice for getting some of those great macro shots. Additionally, I was very impressed at how this lens performed for portrait work, and I would have no issues recommending it for that. Maybe the only downside of this lens is that the autofocus isn't as confident as the rest of the S series of primes, in my testing at least anyway. At the end of the day, I was really impressed with the shots I was able to capture with this lens, paired with the Panasonic S5 Mark II and X. Thanks to Panasonic for the loan of this, and if you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.